James, Chuck talked about your finger being uh, in pretty good shape. Can you tell us where you are in your rehab and how you're feeling right now? Um, yeah, you know, I think we're, we're still obviously going through the whole, whole process with that and uh, the um, as far as the different timelines and um, stuff and check-ins like that. So, like, obviously right now things are looking like they're um, on course to be healing well and uh, I'll have another check-in with the doctor probably next week to kind of keep updating my status. So it kind of goes, I guess, at this point, maybe every two weeks I've been getting a check-in or every maybe more like every 10 days with the doctors and they kind of re-update as far as uh, the next steps are, but, uh, but yeah, so I'll have a, probably one of those, uh, one of those x-rays next week and then try to, again, they'll tell me what, what I'm kind of cleared to do and, uh, cleared to progress with. Can you grip a stick or anything? Can you at least grip a stick or anything at this point, James, or no? No, I haven't touched the stick yet. I'm not cleared to basically lift anything, uh, that, that weighs more than a pound. So, uh, just been doing, uh, just more, just, Passive uh, motion stuff and um, uh, 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 taking my time with that, and then obviously they'll give me the go ahead at a certain point when the doctor thinks it's appropriate to start progressing things uh, in that sense. James, as a uh, player rep, do you have a a lot of uh, conversation with your teammates, or or uh, and and how is that done? Like once a week, you have a conference call, or or are there a lot of updates that you have to make? Yeah, you know what, I think, again, this is such a unique situation in the sense of how much correspondence it, it, it honestly feels like around the times of, like, uh, CBA negotiations, just in the sense of there's obviously lots of updates to give guys and uh, it can change change by the day, by the hour, it seems like sometimes. So, obviously, we're trying to keep guys in the loop as far as what's going on. And, obviously, at this point, everyone's main concern is just uh, the, the health and safety of them and their families and society in general. So, I mean, at this point, that's kind of the, I guess, the uh, the stage that we're at with all this. Obviously, everyone seems to be gathering information and data, whether it be uh, governments and, and, and the things that are way above uh, the lens of, of uh, business and professional sports. So, obviously, we're taking kind of the cues from that, and then uh, that starts to trickle down. Well, James, prepare for back to the Going back to timeline. Repeat question, please. James, what are you guys prepared for in terms of timeline? It sounds like the NHL kind of pushed things back uh, again today in terms of uh, quarantine and all that to mid-April. What, what are you guys preparing for? Um, as preparing for as far as like what back to playing and back to routine or. Well, in terms of when you think you can have any action whatsoever, I guess. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, again, that's been the hardest part, I feel like, for not only us, but I feel like everyone in the world. It's just, like, all this kind of uncertainty around everything. I think uh, it'd be nice to be like, you know what, you guys, you, you sit at home for a month and then everything will go back to normal. I think that'd be obviously a lot easier for everyone to handle than, like, these kind of daily the weekly updates on stuff and, like, you're kind of still unsure about what's going to go on. So it feels like, I mean... Feels like we're almost like yeah, like a lot of people feel like I'm sure like just just running in place right now, trying to again uh, just stay uh, stay busy and uh, keep yourself uh, in shape and that sort of things for us. And um, yeah, obviously we'll once we get the green light to start progressing things, um, that that'll be nice. But obviously, uh, again, we'll see when those updates uh, end up coming. Are you optimistic James, that the season will uh, continue? Yeah, I like to think of things on, on that in that lens versus uh, versus the kind of the other way where you can think that we're uh, like trying to wonder how we're going to get this done. I'd like to think that we'll uh, again find a way, but ultimately, again, we want to we want to guarantee the safety of uh, everyone involved, whether that's uh, players, staff, fans, families, um, all that stuff. So, like, certainly. We don't want to do anything at the expense of any of that. I mean, this is a big, way bigger issue than uh, than than sports or business or whatever it may be. Obviously, there's lots of uh, lots of stuff going on in the world right now, so we all have to do our parts um, in a different way. As far as just again, just sitting tight at home and following the different instructions that the governments are uh, are putting out there. 
James, going back to the injury for a second, um, how has everything going on in the world affected your your rehab, recovery, everything like that? I'm assuming there's been some changes to uh, to it. Yeah, no, certainly. I mean, again, obviously, uh, in a perfect world, you'd like to stay on the ice for most of this because it's an injury that you can kind of train around in that sense. But obviously, that that was all put on put on hold um, with with all this stuff as well. So I'm just trying again to stay maintain it. Uh, my fitness and being in good shape and just sticking with the part of my routine that I can stick with and working around the stuff uh, with the hand. But certainly it's a little bit different of a dynamic uh, in the sense of that versus not being able to do some things that I would like to do, maybe be on the ice and stuff like that. What can you do at home, James? What do you what do you have as far as, I know we talked to a couple of guys. I think Claude said he had a, an exercise bike in the basement of, of his place up in Ottawa. What do you have with you where, where you where you're at? Yeah, for me, uh, I'm actually uh, out in Minnesota in my uh, in-laws uh, basement here. So my house in Minnesota is not quite finished yet. So I'm dealing with uh, trying to scrap together some things from my gym at my house to, to put, bring along there to to be able to put together my routine. I think most of my routine anyway nowadays is mostly just uh, with bands and body weight and stuff like that and doing different movements and stuff like that. So I've been able to do a lot of that sort of stuff and uh, – Stay on that, but uh, yeah, again, you're trying to just make it make it work the best you can in, uh, in these circumstances. Are there any other questions? Yeah, hey James, as, as tough as it as it is to be sitting home right now, and obviously you wouldn't be playing anyway, but the team was one of the hottest in the league when things went on pause. Is it make it a little bit more frustrating that you know you guys are playing some great hockey and now it all kind of has come to a stop, and you don't know when you're going to be able to get back going again? Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head with everything you just said there. I think uh, ultimately, uh, again, we were doing a lot of good things. Obviously, we're on a nice run there. And then obviously, the, um, the, that momentum obviously just get, uh, comes to a halt just with with everyone else. But uh, that being said, obviously, again, we realize this is about stuff that's bigger than sports. This is about livelihoods of, uh, of people and uh, their health and, and stuff like that. So obviously we're all trying to play our part in, um, in doing the things we're supposed to be doing, but certainly it's uh, definitely disappointing in the sense that we, we felt good about what we were building and uh, we want to get a chance to try to continue at that at some point. James, we've seen the Bauer company move its technology over to making uh, face shields for medical personnel, and we've seen teams and players donating money to uh, arena workers. What does that say about the uh, character of the hockey community? Yeah, that's been that's been great to see. I think, uh, yeah, like you said, you see all these different initiatives that have gone on around uh, around the world and around the sports community in particular. There's different guys stepping up and and stuff like that. I know very early on. I know some of us, some of us in our families, organizations in Philadelphia that help provide some of the students there that when school is canceled to make sure they get some uh, some of their meals and stuff like that. So obviously there's tons of organizations and stuff like that um, that are trying to do uh, to, to help people out in this uh, in this uh, crazy time right now. So it's uh, again obviously we're all part of the same uh, same community and society. So uh, we want to try to do our part to to make uh, make things better for people who might be struggling. All right. Hey, We'll take two more questions, please. Two more. Hey, Jamie. One of the, the guys who came onto the team this year and, and has helped you get to where you've gotten is Kevin Hayes. You maybe knew him a little bit better than, than some of the other guys when he first came in. But what has he meant to your group, not just on the ice with all the things he's done, but off the ice? We've seen all the viral videos, all the cool mic'd up stuff. Is that sort of what, you know, you kind of warned the rest of the guys when he's coming and this is how he would be? Or is this even more so of, of his uh, kind of personality? Yeah, you know, it, it's perfect. It's nice, again, in a situation where he comes into a room to and can be exactly himself, and I think that was kind of something that we needed, just like having some that kind of character who kind of, again, brings that life uh, to things. And again, there's never a dull or quiet moment when you're hanging around with him, and I think that's something our locker room kind of needed. Um, just on a day-to-day basis, it's, he's kind of the, the straw that stirs the drink in the, in the sense of a lot of that stuff. So, uh, so yeah, it's been perfect. It, obviously, again, I've known, known him and his family for a long time. I grew up playing uh, in summer hockey and stuff with his brother, with his older brother. So I've known him for a long time and uh, 
pumped to see him and see the success that he's had over the course of his uh, his hockey career going back to that. I remember I, his dad would always ask me for uh, for a few extra at the end of the season just because he could never find the ones long enough for him going up, and I I had the extra length added on mine when I was playing at the U.S. program. So so it's just funny when you have have a guy that's been bumming your sticks uh, back then and now now he's a front line. Uh, player and a teammate and stuff like that so so i'm really happy for him and his family and seems, again everything for him seems like a, a great fit so so uh, we're happy to have him one final question james there's been different thoughts about how the league could resume uh the season whether it's um going right into the playoffs or just playing way deeper into the summer do you have any thoughts on that or what could be the best approach yeah you know what i think uh, for that i mean ultimately it's going to come down to timing and how we can fit everything in. I think in a perfect world, obviously, you'd like to finish the regular season and play it out as it may and kind of go from there. But if, if some of those time frames become a little bit too shortened where we can't fit that in, it kind of creates a unique opportunity, in my opinion, to maybe try something a little bit unique with, uh, with the playoff structure. And I know that's been talked about in the last couple of years, especially is trying to maybe add some more teams to it. And again, if we're in a situation – like we are this year, I think it's a basically a free chance to to try something a little bit outside the box, maybe, and and see what might work. So obviously, again, we'll 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 cross those bridges when we get there. As far as uh, time wise, when we're able to start things up, it, um, and how that might look, and how much time we have to to go through things. But uh, certainly, I would think that, like again, it's I think all this is going to come down to timing. And, 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 you're breaking up. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, yes. Yeah, no, yeah, ultimately, I think, like I mentioned before, it's going to come down to uh, to timing more than anything else. And then, again, if it gets to the point where we where we don't have enough time to maybe play out the regular season, which I'm sure everyone obviously would like to do, play out that regular season, then we can be more creative in the sense of trying something a little bit outside the box with the playoff structure, potentially. So I think, again, obviously, we're going to just kind of, that's going to be dictated a lot by by just uh, what goes on here in the next uh, couple months and and um, what the what the, what when things are able to get going again. Kevin, first of all, how much, how much do you miss hockey, uh, especially with the way the team was playing and uh, really on a roll? Yeah, uh, I mean this is a very odd situation um, that happened, uh, but I mean just like everyone else has been saying, it, it obviously is a lot bigger than hockey. And, no matter how much uh, anyone in the league says they missed it, it's, it's a lot more important to, to figure out what's going on with our society right now and, and um, get that handled before we come back. But, but no, I mean, it's it's crazy. Uh, this situation has never happened before. Um, and it's I miss going to the rink every day and, and seeing the guys, seeing the coaches, and, and kind of being able to go out uh, and play against other teams and play in front of our fans. But that obviously has been put on hold for a little bit, and um, you never you never expect anything like that to happen. Um, so it was kind of weird, but and then for us it was weird because we were I think we won nine in a row, and then we just lost to the Bruins, and we were feeling good about ourselves. We were trying to catch up to the Capitals and the Metro, and and um, and now we're kind of just sitting at home and not really seeing each other ever, just through Facetimes. Kevin, how after three weeks where you haven't played? Have you, in any kind of way, come to terms with the possibility that after all that, your season might be over? You might not get to resume this season? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone's a little bit concerned about that. Um, I mean, it sucks because you you play this game, uh, you build friendships, you build memories, you build uh, you build moments where you want to go for the Stanley Cup, and, and um, I felt as if our team had come together and uh, in a great way, and we were really playing for one another, and everyone was kind of buying into the system that AV put together. And now there's a possibility that um, we'll never possibly see the outcome of that. And, and who knows if, if um, we'll ever be? I mean, I, I assume that we're going to be this good all the time, but who knows if we're going to have this feeling again? And, um, and it's kind of sad that you can't go to the rink every day, but uh, I mean, everyone's dealing with it, so it's not just us. Kevin, how have you been able to keep yourself busy, keep yourself occupied? You know, I don't know what kind of gym stuff you might have, but how are you trying to stay in hockey shape or as close to hockey shape as possible? Yeah, I mean, I haven't skated uh, since 
the practice before we went to Tampa. Um, and I mean, the hardest part was saying, obviously, was getting on the ice. You can do as much as you want, but nothing really correlates to, to on ice training. Um, so obviously, that that has probably gone away a little bit. Um, so no, I got, I got a Peloton. Uh, one of my best buddies is across the street for me. And, uh, he has a gym in his unit, so that that kind of helped me a lot. Um, but other than that, it's just really Peloton and workouts that my summer trainer gives me. You had mentioned when we spoke during uh, training camp that you had sw- it switched up and you're working with the the Tom Brady program a little bit. How has that helped you as the season's gone on? And you you kind of had an idea of what it might do for you, but now that we're into April already, how has that helped you? I don't think you've missed a game this season. Yeah, no, I mean, I just feel a lot more pliable, honestly. Um, they kind of set the groundwork this summer, and then it's kind of just up to myself as an athlete to, to kind of stick with it. And, and even though it might be tedious, if the more you do it, I mean, it takes extra, almost an hour of stretching and, and just doing the right things, eating the right way, getting the right sleep, and something that I wasn't fully bought into um, before the season. And I don't know if... If I wasn't doing those things, <clears throat> if I would still play all the games or whatever, but in my head, I think it's helping. Have they given you stuff to work on, you know, while we're while everybody's kind of shut down, things you can do at home, or is this something that you need access to equipment to continue doing? Um, I haven't really been following it too much since this season. I did, honestly. Um, and maybe Brady brought all of his, all of his employees to Tampa with him. <laughs> Kevin, would you would you be open to the NHL playing neutral site FC Arena games if it meant getting any part of the season in and, and to finish the season? Or do you feel if you can't play in your own home arenas and it's just not worth it? Um, if there's going to be no fans there, I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, it doesn't matter where the ice is. Um, I think the biggest part of a home field, uh, home ice advantage is the fans and the fans you get into in the arena and knowing how passionate your fans are and how much you want to play for them, but if there's no fans there, um, I don't think that uh, you're not going to really have that much home ice advantage if it's just the ice. Every, the ice is pretty much the same everywhere. Kevin, this is obviously so, so yes, I am willing to, to play at a neutral site. Sorry. Kevin, this is obviously a difficult situation for everybody. As someone who spent time in New York, how tough is it for you to see really the epicenter of what's going on there right now? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's it totally what's going on. Uh, no matter where it is, um, I, I think people kind of took it lightly at the beginning and they weren't following the right procedures to, to kind of quarantine. But uh, we kind of suffered a little bit because of that. But it sucks to see that New York is uh, is kind of in the middle of it. Um, that place is a, it's an unbelievable place. It's one of the best places in the world, um, and it's uh, uh, it's horrible what's going on there. I saw a video of of uh, someone walking through the streets about. A week ago, and it was completely empty, and it was something that I've I used to love walking around in that city, and, and you couldn't see a single person in the road and in the subway, and it's uh, it's gloomy for sure. Kevin, sort of in the same vein, your parents are are both cancer survivors. They might have, you know, they might be in that high risk category. How are they doing, and, and how's your family doing as, as we move through this? Hopefully. Yeah, so I went back to Boston uh, pretty much right away, um, and uh, our whole family, my three sisters, uh, my brother, and my mom and dad are kind of within probably 15 minutes of each other, and um, everyone's doing, doing well. Uh, my sister's pregnant, so she's she's kind of uh, the queen of making sure everyone's doing the right thing. She's not taking any risk. Uh, my mom and dad, uh, they're pretty carefree people, but I think they to realize that uh, what they have to do is doing, and um, they're healthy and they're quarantining themselves, and we've kind of only seen each other, so so far so good for everyone. Are you still staying in Boston with your brother, Kim? No, I actually I bought a place last summer. Uh, I was supposed to move in in June, um, but due to this, I I drove up to Boston right after uh, right after we got back from Tampa. And, and uh, signed the closing agreement so I could move into it. So I've been been in the seaport uh, for probably the last 10 days and just living in a new apartment with very little stuff because everything's back ordered by like six months. Kevin, 
Kevin, uh, if you guys do get back started, it might be months before that happens. How do you guys, you know, just, I guess, thinking about it, how would you go about recapturing what you guys had in the lead up to the pause? Like, can you look back on years where, you know, you guys had a great year in New York and then you came out strong the following year? Yeah, no, I know what you mean. It's, it's, uh, I mean, we were definitely feeling ourselves going out there for a little bit. Um, we had some good swagger. We had some good confidence. Uh, we weren't overconfident, but but um, I thought our leadership group kind of set a standard. And I think it's 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 a weird dynamic. I think everyone everyone honestly brings their own leadership into that locker room, whether it's an older guy or a younger guy. And, and a lot of people lead in different ways. And and I I think everyone was completely bought into our system and. I think if in a couple of months we go back to it and we have to jump into playoffs, um, I'm pretty confident that we have some older veterans that would make sure uh, everyone's kind of back to business pretty quickly. You speak of leaders. What have you been doing to stay sane for the last three weeks? I can't hear you. What was that? What have you been doing just to stay sane? Um, the only the only positives out of this for me is I became a gamer again. Uh, I haven't played Xbox. Box in three years, and now I'm fully addicted to, to playing Call of Duty. So that's somewhat of a positive, and I started cooking for the first time in my life. What have you made? <laughs> um, we made eggplant parm and chicken tips last night, and then turkey tips with veggies the other night. Kevin, do you um, have any kind of any Kevin? Do you, are there any kind of like regular like, FaceTime or you know whatever? chats with the other teammates, anything like uh, planned, or do you just kind of catch up with someone whenever you can? Uh, we have a Snapchat group, and we got a, 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 a team uh, text message group uh, that's pretty much regularly going. I send every day to kind of check in with guys and see if they want to play Xbox. I usually play with my and Faraby on Call of Duty. Um, and then... Michael Raffle sent a hilarious snap the other day. He shaved his head, so we have kind of given it to him. Uh, but I don't think he's too concerned because he lives in Austria. He's not going to see anyone for a couple months. Speaking, Kevin, you talked about being the leaders on the team before, and you sort of moved into that role. When did you feel comfortable, you know, speaking up? Because you came into a locker room where you really didn't know anybody. Um, when did you feel comfortable speaking up and being able to kind of showcase more of your personality? Yeah, uh... I mean, it's always hard when you when you sign a big contract and you go into a new team, especially a team that that wasn't really in a full rebuild. They've kind of had their leadership there for a while, um, and I, I thought I was pretty lucky because I went right in with uh, with AV, and um, that was kind of a smooth sailing for me with with the coach and stuff. But uh, when I first got there, I wasn't really nervous. I was just cognizant of of how loud to be or how much to talk and I didn't want to step on anyone's toes I mean Drew Horacek uh, Couturier it's kind of been their team for a while and I was kind of just kind of just sitting around there just to kind of to feel how they acted and kind of follow their lead but I would say it probably took about two weeks until they were probably annoyed with me at the beginning with how much I talked and how much I kind of joked around but I think they kind of liked it and I still think they like it so I think it's working a couple of guys said you're sort of like a breath of fresh air where, you know, your personality, you know, the nicknames, the, the walkouts, everybody sort of gets excited by it. It's maybe an element that the team was missing. Did you, you know, from playing against them, did you notice that, that maybe they were a little stiff and you were able to kind of loosen some guys up a little bit just by being who you are? Um, no, I honestly didn't really. The only person I knew was, uh, was, uh, James Van Rooms, like, uh, I met I met Drew at a summer camp once in Florida, but we weren't really that tight. Um, I don't think he liked me actually because I was playing for the Rangers, but that's another topic. Um, and I, I don't really realize what, if teams are stiff or not personality wise. I I kind of have my personality, and, and um, I I think I'm a very positive guy that kind of makes people feel feel good about themselves and. Um, I remember when I talked to Chuck when I signed, he kind of wanted me to to be myself, and he, well, this isn't the exact words, but we invested in you, we would like you to invest in us, and, and I mean, it's, it's been easy, to, it's an unbelievable group 
not even the players, the equipment staff, the trainers, uh, the nutritionists, the GM, the assistant GM, all the people behind the scenes. It's, it's, uh, it's an easy organization to enter and, and to, to kind of feel great about yourself. And everyone's trying to, to try to get the best out of you. And I feel like that's what I try to do with guys. I, I try to enter the, enter the arena every day pretty happy. It's, for me, it's the best best job in the whole entire world. Um, I, I don't know where I'll be without without hockey, but um, I know my worst day is, is definitely not comparable to anyone else's worst day. Where'd you come up with the nicknames for the guys? Uh, a lot of it just came just came right off right off the top of my head. It's usually a lot of it has to do with. Uh, last names and then some are inside jokes and, and uh, yeah I mean, it's, it's funny it's just an easy way to, to kind of show respect for one another and to kind of let everyone know they're part of a team and, and um, it's I mean a lot of it's joking around but I think it brings the team together the one that, that nobody seems to be able to figure out is Denzel Glensky can you talk about the origin of that one I, I think that one has to stay under wraps that's uh I think too many people are trying to figure out what it means, uh, and it, I think uh, I don't even know if people know who it's about, but but um, but yeah, that one's gonna have to stay in a mystery. Any other? Kevin, has this, go ahead, Jordan. Has this, thanks, Jack. Uh, has this time made you realize just how passionate Philly is about hockey? Just given it seems like every single day, fans are on social media tweeting you and saying how much they miss Flyers hockey is this just showing you how much uh, this city yeah. I mean, it's, it's honestly even beyond uh, the Flyers it's, it's one of the biggest sports cities in the arguably in the in the United States or in Canada it's, it's uh, you have four premier teams that are pretty good every year year in and year out um, and I think People never envisioned a time not being able to watch sports, but it just shows that how passionate people really are. I mean, I knew coming into it, people would tell me that the fans are harsh and the fans are tough on you, but uh, they're just as passionate as we are. Uh, the fans have been through the good and the bad times with Flyers, and, and um, I mean, hopefully good times in the future, but uh, it just shows how much they really care for for their city and care that their uh, their teams are doing well. 